गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन वेलकम बैक यू ऑल इन आर सोशल स्टडीज क्लास इज यू नो दैट वी आर ऑन द चैप्टर नंबर फोर नेचुरल रिसोर्स नेचुरल वेजिटेशन एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ राइट सो इन दिस चैप्टर वी स्टडी अबाउट द नेचुरल वेजिटेशन एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ वट डू यू मीन बाय द नेचुरल वेजिटेशन नेचुरल वेजिटेशन मीन्स प्लांट्स लाइफ फॉर्म इन द सेंस ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड वट डू यू मीन बाय द वाइल्ड लाइफ एनिमल्स इंसेक्ट्स एंड बर्ड्स राइट now where the natural vegetation and wildlife exist right so for that we have to know about hydrosphere lithosphere and atmosphere what is hydrosphere the part of the earth where only water is right and what is lithosphere the part of the earth where only land and what is atmosphere part of the earth where the gas and the air right so we can we know that life cannot exist in hydrosphere not in lithosphere and not in atmosphere we need all three spheres for their survival or we can say that life exists where the water land air gases available where all the three things land air water exist there life exists the narrow interacting zone between the hydrosphere lithosphere and the atmosphere in that zone life exists we all know that zone is biosphere we call that zone is biosphere or we can say that life form now biosphere zone where all the three spheres interact it is called a biosphere in this zone life form exists this life supporting system is known as ecosystem how natural vegetation and wildlife become a resource because natural vegetation and wildlife is having a importance in our life right so the importance of vegetation and wildlife natural vegetation is in the form of forest is a source of timber and firewood softwood for manufacture of paper fruits and nuts berries medicinal herbs product like the rubber that is called latex quinine medicine used for malaria bark of the tree tar a substance formed by burning tobacco turpentine a gum get from tree used for curing so many diseases cork and the plants also gives a shelter to animals produce oxygen we breathe storage of ground water right replenishing the ground water also binds the soil and prevent the soil erosion thus they are an important natural resource for the man right now distribution of natural vegetation natural vegetation in types major vegetation types of the world are forest grasslands and shrubs forest what are the characteristics of the forest area of heavy rainfall having heavy rainfall huge trees may thrive a big trees abundant of vegetation and water supply these all are the characteristics of forest forest of the world are tropical evergreen forest tropical deciduous forest temperate evergreen or we can say that the mixed forest mediterranean forest temperate deciduous forest coniferous or we can say that the taiga forest right there are six forest of the world now one by one i will discuss with you all the forest right first of all tropical evergreen forest these forests are also called the tropical rain forest these thick forest occur in the regions near the equator and close to the tropics clear these regions are hot and receive the heavy rainfall throughout the year as there is no particular dry season the trees do not shed their leaves all together this is the main reason they are evergreen the thick canopies of the closely spaced trees do not allow the sunlight to penetrate inside the forest even in the daytime right hardwood trees like the rosewood ebony mahogany are common here is it clear now come to the second one tropical deciduous forest right tropical deciduous are the main forest main monsoon forests found in the large part of the india that is north australia northern australia and in a south central america 
these regions experience the seasonal changes trees shed their leaves in the dry season to conserve the water the hardwood trees found in the forest are saw teak neem and shisham hardwood trees are extremely used for making furniture transport and the construction materials right tigers lions elephants langurs and the monkeys are the common animals of these regions clear come to the third one temperate evergreen forest right the temperate evergreen forest are located in the mid latitudinal coastal regions they are commonly found along the eastern margins of the continents for example in the south east usa south china and in the south east brazil they comprise both hard and the soft trees like the oak pine and eucalyptus clear come to the next one temperate deciduous forest as we go towards the higher latitudes there are more temperate deciduous forest right these are found in the north eastern part of the usa china new zealand child and also found in the coastal regions of the western europe they shed their leaves in the dry season the common trees are oak ash beech and cetera and the deer foxes wolves are the animals commonly found here birds like the pheasant monals are also found here clear come to the next one mediterranean forest right the west and the south margins of the continents are different they have a mediterranean vegetation it is mostly found in the area around the mediterranean sea in europe africa and asia this kind of vegetation is also found outside the actual mediterranean region in california and the usa south west africa south western south america and the southwest australia these regions are marked for hot dry summers and mildly rain winters citrus fruits such as the oranges figs olives and grapes are commonly cultivated here because the people have removed the natural vegetation in order to cultivate there is not much wildlife here next is coniferous forest coniferous forest are also called as taiga forest these forests are also seen in the higher altitudes coniferous are tall soft wood evergreen trees the woods of these trees are useful for making the pulp which is used for manufacturing the paper and the new newsprint match boxes and packing boxes are also made from soft wood chair fox mink polar bear are the common animals found here right i hope it is clear to all of you the types of forest of the world now come to the grasslands grasslands in moisture and rainfall in comparison to the forest moisture and rainfall decreases to so grassland areas form size and the density of the trees also decreases in comparison to the forest areas short stunted trees and the grasses like that the savannas grassland prairies studied in the class 7th also na this occur due to the less rainfall means the grassy area is more right now the types of grasslands tropical grasslands and the temperate grasslands now come to the tropical grasslands these occurs on the either side of the equator and extend till the tropics this vegetation grows in the areas of the moderate to low amount of rainfall right the grasses can grow very tall about 3 to 4 meters in height they cover much of the africa as well as the large areas of australia south america and india elephants zebras giraffes deer leopards are common in the tropical grasslands tropical grasslands are also home to some of the largest land animals on the earth temperate grasslands temperate grasslands are located in the mid latitudes temperate grasslands are home to many large herbivores some of these include the bison gazelles zebras rhinoceros and the wild horses temperate grasslands are composed of the rich mix of grasses and the forbs and the underlain by some of the world's most fertile soil temperate grasslands have a temperate continental climate 
which is cooler than the savannas temperate grasslands can be divided into tall grasses grasses areas and the short grasses areas now come to the thorny bushes these are found in the dry deserts like the regions right tropical deserts are located on the western margins of the continent the vegetation cover is scarce here because the scanty rains and the scorching heat the growth of the natural vegetation is very limited here only mosses lichens and very smaller shrubs right are found here it grows during the sh very short summer this is called the tundra and the type of vegetation this vegetation is found in the polar areas of the europe asia and north america conservation of natural vegetation and wildlife as we all know that natural vegetation and forest are our resources so we need to conserve it natural vegetation and wildlife play an important role in our lives they play a very important role in our life right due to the changing environment and the human intervention or we can say that the human interface right these vegetation and wildlife are being threat of danger it creates a lot of problem first one loss of natural habitat deforestation soil erosion due to deforestation because it re hold the soil with their roots forest fires tsunami landslides poaching global warming wildlife have lost their habitat and some have been become extinct fodder for the domestic animals in the short supply valued medicinal herbs and the valuable timber are vanishing due to the man's greed and the selfish activities these all human made and the natural factors are responsible for the extinction and the harming of natural vegetation and wildlife hence it is necessary to take up effective measures for the conservation of natural vegetation some of the steps include afforestation afforestation means to increase the forest cover by a large scale by planting more plants protection of forest by law discouraging agriculture practices like the shifting cultivation which destroy the forest taking care to prevent the forest fires which wipe up large forest areas social forestry to increase the forest cover as well as to provide products for use by the community program when mahotsav can encouraging the plantation of trees setting up a forest research institutions to carry on the research on the forest products and conservation example the forest research institute dehradun uttarakhand in india right so our consequence and the concern can save the forest and preserve the natural vegetation cover now come to the wildlife wildlife is an integral part of our ecosystem wildlife can be found in all ecosystems desert forest rainforest plains grasslands and the other areas including the most developed urban sites also all have distinct form of wildlife preservation of rate of wildlife is of very great importance now importance of wildlife to maintain the ecological balance of nature and maintain the food chain and nature cycle it has economic value many wild plants provide the useful substances like the timber paper gums etc and they also have a wide application in the ayurveda and the other branches of medicine wild animals products are tusk ivory leather honey etc wildlife is a source of livelihood and the subsistence due to the existence of the wildlife on the earth human gets a benefit to sustain life wildlife plays an essential role in the ecological and the biological process that are yet again significant to the life the normal functioning of the wild biosphere depends on the endless interactions amongst the animals plants and microorganisms large organizations like the world wildlife fund wwf and the green peace are doing a lot to protect and preserve the wildlife in our country also wwf is functioning since 1969 it takes active programs and steps to preserve our biodiversity schools are also becoming the member of this organization 
which trains the students and makes them aware about our flora and fauna our awareness and the efforts can save the beautiful creature from extinction we need to preserve them from our own benefit as well as for our future generation thank you students your chapter is completed i hope you all have understood all the concept